Hey everyone, it's Hydropump here. We're back with uh, the Inferni deck that I won with the uh, Tengu Scramble Scramble Tournament. I won with this deck list here. And in today's video, we're going to be going over the replays from that tournament. Uh, it's been a little bit of time, so I don't remember all the details. But uh, yeah, this is the list. I had a deck profile on the my channel as well. Um, so go check that out. It's a... Uh, Pretty cool if you like looking at the cards and I go in depth about the card um, choices and all that so check that video out anyways we're gonna jump into the first round here and I think we're playing against cast chaos so it does appear to be the case so I I think I'm going first uh, yeah I'm going first so my hand was book of moon launcher alert darkness barrier warning foolish a little awkward and I, I haven't really had any testing with this list I decided to try it out um, so I'm not really I usually don't play a lower darkness in my furry list but it was a tour guide thing so I was like ah, oh, might as well now I had to think for a minute I was like well you can foolish well I mean the only thing really worth foolishing is arching here um, but I decided just to go for the launcher, just to make, you know, make barrier alive, you know, starting to do things. Um, yep, so we just set everything. Go launcher, arching. And at worst, if they have like a Veiler here, we just, you know, we're still sitting on barrier warning. So it's pretty good. I think I get another arching here because if I happen to draw a tour guide, I can banish the Archfiend I just searched. And then do the tour guide thing to make Livier to get it back. So that's kind of what I was doing. Could have gotten break as well, but then don't really have a live allure. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just not really doing a whole lot. So drew MST and mind control, which uh, don't really do a whole lot in this scenario. But we're just going to have to banish the Archfiend and pass on that. So we get tour guide here. I think we're just gonna be able to book a moon this. Save the warning. And uh, MST is pretty good, just so you can snipe the warnings. I think I sniped a couple other warnings. Uh, do we drew street patrol, which is uh, actually doesn't do any damage because that was an exceeds monster. And yeah, so they're on the Cassis deck again. They don't really have a whole lot going on. This deck's actually kind of pretty slow. If uh, it can be slow, uh, so I never played against this deck before the tournament, so that kind of come into play a little bit later. But so they take 300 there again. MST <laughs> sniped the other warning, and then uh, yeah, I probably just have like a lot of good top decks here. And I figured this was Kashano. Um, actually, I didn't even know they're on Chaos technically yet, but um, Kashana, so I definitely know they're on Cassid now. Drew Descendant, which is a pretty bad draw. Probably just gonna have to. Yeah, so we just warning the Chaos Sorcerer. This makes it so they have nothing good to reborn other than like Sangan. So that's something we're considering. If I were to like barrier this Chaos Sorcerer, then they could reborn it. And I figured this was bait for like a heavy storm or dark hole, but we barriered the dark hole. Reborn the actually I guess the Leviathan is to beat over. Um Yeah, I guess that's fine. Like, you know. And we drew Avenger here. So we can take the set. Um Yeah, I don't think it's it wouldn't be a level three tuner. It could be a spy, so um, but this ends up being descended, so we can just make Trish here, and it's just, actually I make a Taster. Um, well, I could have made Trish. I'm trying to think why I didn't. I guess it's just like in case he draws like a like a like a D prison or something, maybe. But he draws draws Valor. So we're going to the next game here. 
Uh, they start off, they have a pretty good ice hand. They have Cassis with Wing Blast, Warning, BLS, MST, Spy. So that's, that's about as ideal as it gets for this deck. Uh, maybe throw a tour guide in there and then you're really cooking. But that's a, that's a really good opening for them. Not so good for me. I open Street Patrol, Necromancer, Barrier, Avenger, MST. I drew Greffer, so that's actually kind of nice. Probably just fire off this. Yeah, fire, yeah, fire off the MST. Go for a ditch. Make a taster. I figure it was a spy. I, yeah, okay. Can't make a Stygian Insurgents because Greffer is a. I think you need a Fiend for Insurgents just to make sure. You need a Fiend. Actually, no. Oh, wow, I could have made Insurgents. Duh. That was a misplay by me. For some reason I thought you needed a. F okay, so Cataster, not good there. I should have the surgeons, then we could have ran over, ran over. Okay. Uh, so they're going to MST this. I don't know if it really, really matters. Actually, yeah, because they can make a little, they can just synchro now. So, yeah. If they, I mean, they still had warning maxi. Do it with Drawn Reborn, so they probably would have. Assuming, okay, let's just hypothetically, this was Stig Insurgent, so it ran over both spies. And then, uh, we would draw Max C, so they, they would, um, they wouldn't really have a play this turn. Like, maybe they just sick, they probably had to sick Cat Sith and pass with warning set. So I still have Cataster. I would have Necromancer and I'm drawing Reborn, so. Yeah, that's definitely a misplay by me. I just kind of forgot that. That guy. Then I kind of just had to like hardcore play into this Max C here, which was his last card. Uh, just to clear this BLS. I think I just go for a Doom Dragon. Uh. Maybe just pop the BLS, burn for 15, but you know, they got the mind control and game right there. So yeah, that was definitely a mistake by me actually, because I forgot, <laughs> oops, forgot that Surgeons only needs a Fiend Tuner. So that's actually uh, pretty important. So yeah, you can just like always make this guy in this deck pretty much. Um, so yeah, our starting hand, let's see. So not bad. We have Archie Necro, Barrier Break, and Miss T, and Armageddon Knight. Actually, yeah, I definitely messed up this. I remember now. Okay. So their hand is Crow, Dark Hole, Wing Blast, Cat, and Solemn. I don't know why. Like, So this goes into me like, not knowing this deck very well. Like, I know they have like discard traps and stuff, so I was like, you know, I'm just not going to try to be very slow about this like if they got heavy storm they got it um but in reality re re reality you really don't have to play against this deck like that um so what uh, ideally should like i think i just go like set necromancer uh because this can probably uh survive a turn uh aside from like tour guide play make leviathan then that would be a little unfortunate. Um, could just throw Archfiend out there. But then uh, then I can go Armageddon, Ditch Street Patrol, get Necromancer. But it's also nice that I can just, uh, yeah, just flip the Necromancer if I want to and it's something to attack. So I think that's why I went with that. But I definitely should have kept the break and the MST in hand. And I... <laughs> Their uh, six card is a uh, heavy storm, so they just shotgun it, and then yeah, it's pretty much lights out from there. Did draw one for one, so that's pretty good. And we're gonna be able to trigger this mirage here, but they have the crow. Um, just make it faster there. They have dark hole. And they draw a 
tour guide, and then make Olivia here take my Archfiend. And we have Mirage here. And I don't, I guess they were just having lag or something, but they saw in the Mirage. Which that was okay, whatever. And. Yep, and they had Maxi and Wing Blast, so. Just kind of conceded there. Uh, what was I gonna say? All right, no, this was like uh, well, we have drawn next. But yeah, I definitely mis misplayed that second game with the surgeon thing. Like, the, I think that actually would have probably won me the game potentially if I just made that guy. So yeah, I lost the first round, so that was not great. And it was only like 16 players in this tournament, uh, so it wasn't like big by any means and. This is Tangle, uh, Tengu Scramble, so I I like loosely pay attention to the tournament series and people kind of just mess around in the Tengu Scramble because usually they're kind of smaller tournaments, so. Uh, anyways, we're playing it's like Macro Stun. <laughs> he has an Inferno Randomizer in his deck. Guess I get some pluses there, but his hand is filled with monsters, Tour Guide, Tengu. It's a little, it's a little jumbled. Um, this is the, the second round again. So we have Greffer, two Mirages, Tour Guide, MST, Warning. So yeah, we just do Greffer, ditch the Mirage, because, you know, not really going to do a whole lot there. I think I just dump an Archfiend and set the Warning. And yep, there you go. F summon Tengu. I'm just going to Solemn Warning it just so it can't crash. And it's gets out of hand so we go warning there and then they go pot um, get dark hole wangu and dd survivor so I don't, this deck seems like it's playing a lot of monsters to be playing for any randomizer anyway you got three tengu probably like three tour guy you got some number of these guys so a little, a little jarring they get dark hole I don't know if they dark hole. No, they don't dark hole. So this go D Fisher pass. <laughs> so um, I go MST. It man it should have just bluffed this to out. You set it. So I don't go like nuclear here. So we go Greffer ditch. And I know they're probably not playing hand traps like Maxi Veil or anything because you know they have D Fisher. So I ditch the Street Patrol so I can summon this Mirage. And then we go Tour Guide to get Necromancer and then. We just kind of kill him here. This is my uh, Exceeds deck here. That's uh, pretty much enough for game. Because it's uh, 25, 25, and then 36. That's 8,600. So it's kind of like XYZ format, Infernity, which is kind of funny. No synchros here. Um, and they kept on DCing, like they DC'd like eight times within like five minutes. I was like, hey, are you going to be able to like play? Um, so anyways, pretty much their hand is Tour Guide, Tengu, Solemn Judgment, Road, TT, D Prison. So it actually looks really good. And this couple on I think I had to like wait like five minutes, like I had to wait like five minutes like of this them DC and like constantly there. So I was like Hey, are you gonna be able to play? Uh let's see what I was gonna So I had a pretty nice hand. I had Tour Guy Launcher, Mirror Force, Gold Sark, Reborn, Archfiend. So I could have been like actually really cooking here. And go like so we got the we got the necromancer off the tour guide, which I guess they just let go. And then we can gold sark an archfiend, and then launch or ditch archfiend, make levier, uh, then we can set reborn mirror force. I don't even 
I don't even know what they do. I guess maybe they have to saw them to live here. Maybe they just wait. I don't know. It's kind of a bad situation for them. Despite having all these good traps. I think they would have to, like, maybe saw them the live here. Uh, regardless, I would be able, if even if they would saw them that, I would, uh, actually, I wouldn't even gold sark here yet. I would just, I would, uh, overlay for live here and then see what they do anything, and then gold sark. Not sure if they would gold sark or, uh, saw them any of those, but. Regardless, if they would burn Solemn, I would be able to go launch or get Necromancer Archine. They would uh, probably Torrential there, potentially, and then I still have Reborn on top of it. So I have like a pretty good hand to play through their back row. So, anyways, but they kind of just like conceded because they just couldn't keep a stable connection. So, and they already lost the first round. So, uh, on to the third round, playing against my teammate. Ring of Destruction, Pro Storm. We both entered this tournament with Inferni because we've been talking about the deck a lot. And he's been practicing with the deck. This is his first tournament with the deck. Uh, so yeah, we all unfortunately got paired against each other. I think before this, he played against two Hero Beat players. He won against the first one, lost the second one, I believe. Anyways, he goes first. He gets Mirage, Archfiend, Archfiend, Warning, Reborn, Call. It, his build's a little different than mine. And we show each other our builds prior, and then I had Armageddon Knight, Gold Sark, Barrier, Archfiend, Inferno, 1 for 1. So 1 for 1's pretty good. Uh, just kind of go for like the uh, play here to bait something to summon Archfiend. And if I get to go off with it, that's good. And we just Gold Sark the Reborn. Uh, we don't want Gold Sark Launcher. Just because uh, we need that as a combo piece potentially, because we can actually search it. So he just summoned. He drew heavy storm. That's kind of like why I don't like playing heavy storm in Infernity main deck, anyways. Just because you can draw it at awkward times like that when you're kind of setting all your stuff. And he kind of just set out everything just because I guess he knew I'm not on Heavy Storm, so he can kind of just like do that. But then I guess in this scenario, kind of like messed him up because, say, if he didn't set Call of Haunted Reborn, then I would actually be in trouble because he would just Heavy Storm me. Uh, but he's a little too invested on the back row. Now, here. Might have been correct for him to Monster Reborn my Army Get a Knight. Um, and then he could call it a haunted, uh, something else. I think if, uh, he really had a play here, it would probably be like a little too all in, but then he can actually, if you say, if you were to burn these, then he can actually use that if you storm this turn. So, uh, I think he just passed. I drew another Archfiend. This was a, a misclick, misclick, misclick. Um, but yeah, I had to Inferno one of these Archings away and then one for one the other one. Otherwise, I wouldn't have enough Infernities in Grave. Well, I would have like, yeah, I would only have one Arching, so yeah, I would have to do that. It's a little naked, but say if this one for one gets warning too, uh, then I'd be kind of screwed. After we get past this phase right there, summoning Mirage, then we're pretty much in the clear. And I have not normal summon yet, so we go Archie Necromancer, grab Adventure, that's our tuner. And then he just kinda conceded there. On to the next game. So yeah, for this tournament I was siding DD Crows. This, I kinda just threw in as a last minute, like last second option. Just to fill out that sideboard, but definitely it works since that because it works with the Lurrer and Dark Refer, which I happen to have. So he opens Necromancer, Archfiend, Heavy Storm, MST, MST, Mind Control. These next couple games are a little crazy. 
So again, I'm just going for it. Turn one. So we did Gruffer Dips the Crow. We uh, one for one. Uh, I think we had Necromancer in our hand, or and then we and we got pretty much we one for one for the Mirage and got these two back. So we can get for we can go search a barrier here, and this is where Zen Meister is actually good. Uh, otherwise, like this is where Zen Meister is actually good because like. I saw the other build that was just playing Utopia. This guy is super important just because it detaches. In this case, I'm able to beat over the Archfiend and then detach, whereas Utopia is like, you would just have to run into the Archfiend, negate, not kill the Archfiend, and then someone do your own thing. So it's like kind of counterproductive. Um. And then we get another barrier here because we did Zen Meister detach Archfiend and then Necromancer get the Archfiend. We haven't used Necromancer yet because we just got off Mirage. Um, it's a justification of keeping Necromancer in attack, but it didn't really matter in this scenario. And this guy flips up at the end phase, so he just happened. We both had like some crazy crackback plays. So he had MST, MST Heavy Storm. And his hands is like loaded. So, <laughs> what you did here, you drew Necromancer for turn, I think. So, you tour guide, tour guide summon Necromancer from hand. Probably like the only deck that really wants to do that, just empty the hand. Then he mind controlled my Necromancer to take, to get his Archfiend back. And then get Launcher. And then I think it just got beat up from here. Oh, and then he's able to launch her back because he just crashed. So he gets a barrier, and then I was like, oh, this true tour guide. I'm out. So, game three, Fernie Mirror. So I got Armageddon Knight, Archfiend, Crow, Call. So I have a pretty good hand. And then, uh, their hand actually isn't bad either. Like, they got the... I kind of like the setup here, too. So we just ditched Street Patrol. And the reason I kind of led on the Armageddon Knight, um, rather than leading on Tour Guide, Tour Guide could be Levier or Leviathan, and it's also Leviathan could just be bigger than whatever they put up. But I also have Reborn Call of Haunted, so those can work well with Armageddon Knight, whereas if you're reborn, like, you know, it's not as good with the tour guide, so it's okay if they kill this Armageddon Knight because I could just get it back and then mill something again. So they gold sark the reborn here. I wonder if, uh, you know, maybe they could have gold sark the Armageddon Knight. And then make Levier, get Armageddon Knight, did Street Patrol, summon Archfiend. Then they'll have Barrier Break set up. I still think my hand's a little too good. Like, it'll just play through that setup, but. Anyways, I uh, decided to make my own Leviathan. I could have gone off this turn, I think, but I just wanted to play a little slow just to try to get some utilization off the Crow. Uh, I was thinking I decided to go for a crash. That's what we did. So he drew barrier, barrier here. So he just now summons Archfiend. Uh, yeah, I think that Levier play would have been good. Because then I would have been forced to like react to it. So, you know, I figured they had a break set. So I was trying to bait that so I can crow before I have to get rid of my crow to just burn it on something to, you know, because he has Necromancer in Grave. I can crow the Necromancer, but then he can just chain break, pop my Call of Haunted. So I just want to get utilization out of this Call of Haunted before that break happens, because if I Call the Haunted Armageddon Knight on chain like two or higher, Armageddon Knight's going to miss timing because it's a win effect. Uh, well, actually, I don't even think it would matter 
because it's uh, getting destroyed before the effect wave even go off. But anyway, so I just go call a haunted Armageddon to try to bait the break. Uh, didn't fall for it, so we just put Avenger in the grave because we need it anyways. And then we mind control, take Archfiend because uh, you know that will bait the barrier. And if we de decrow the Necromancer, so he actually didn't go with break. I guess he decided to keep it, you know, just in case. Uh, well, he actually has it still alive, so I just had to burn the crow, which is still nice to get rid of the Necromancer. Uh, and then now we can go for the Street Patrol play, I believe. So we go Street Patrol effect, go an Archfiend, we get Necromancer. Keep in mind, we haven't normal summoned yet. So we go normal summon, and then he breaks the uh, the mirage, and he said, "I think he would ask me, like, why didn't I use priority on mirage?" Um, and I guess I wasn't completely sure if he had break set either. Uh, but I wanted to try to get Archie and Grave. Uh, but maybe I should have just like done priority, get Avenger Necromancer, and then I can make a Trish play and then revive. So maybe I should have just done that, but this works too. To where, yeah, I probably would have been better off doing that in this scenario because then you would have been like really screwed. But I can uh, crash, my, crash my Archfiend with his Archfiend. Avenger comes back as a. Uh, level four and then uh, then I can make a eight star here and then he goes call the haunted get launcher get stardust dragon then we can get launcher then we can copy mirage I also have Solemn Judgment set too, so it's pretty uh, pretty handy. So we end with a, we banish the Mirage and Necromancer with two Hunterized Dragons. So now we have Barrier, Solemn, Barrier. And if they happen to run over the Archfiend, we get our Avenger back, so. Uh, oh, and they got the Reborn off the Gold Sark. So they try to crash here, I get Avenger back, they go Necromancer effect, as barrier it, and we drew, we happen to draw another Archfiend, which is uh, funny, but I don't, but it really mattered. Yeah, I, I still had a barrier judgment for the launcher and reborn. Um, I don't think I could have copied anything here with Hunter Eyes, but yeah, me. In hindsight, I should have probably just activate then priority activate Mirage because then I could have done like a Trishula line. Yeah, I just really wanted to get into a Stardust Dragon potentially before, so I wouldn't have to worry about like an MST on my launcher or something like that. Because just because I activate Call the Haunted doesn't necessarily mean that they have MST. Maybe they're just holding it for the launcher. So interesting there. Uh, anyways, we're able to take that against Pro Storm. I think he just kind of scoops here. Yeah. So that was round three. So we're on to round four. I believe this is the six samurai match. So we set the Archfiend and set two. I uh, decided to set barrier and warning. Don't have to set break because not gonna be able to really do anything this turn. Set barrier just to preemptively like play into a field if we can combo off next turn. So, but he goes heavy storm. Uh, his hand's kind of dead. No six hands monster. He has two reborns: asceticism, solemn, and Phoenix chain. So he flip our chain to swing. And then we set everything because Heavy Storm is gone. 
and we just want to have break life and we also have warning so they drew another warning and we decided just to swing with Archfiend again um, yeah I just didn't want to play into a torrential or something like that not really sure why they saw him this necromancer made us actually yeah I don't know but they just want made us to clear some back row actually like this so they can activate something that's, that's a good reason I guess and then we go bury or break pop a uh, double edge so we did not hit the warning we go reborn they warning again they drew a zanji and then I think they can get a guy off this he's on and he gains 300 for oh while well, you control two or more other six sams it makes utopia i warning that but he has uh, the double edge technique <laughs> it makes a uh, a roach so i guess that's why you want to make enfield i don't it's kind of strange like if you uh Anyways, but yeah, we have Roach here, and we're in a simplified game state, which uh, you, Inferno usually does pretty good in these kind of game states, because you have a lot of really good top decks, like one Archfiend's good, Necromancers are live, Mirages are live, Launchers, so it's just like it goes on and on. We drew a Gold Sark, which is actually not a good top deck, we didn't, usually don't want to see that, so I was like, well, hopefully I don't die. Uh, so we decided to get Launcher here. Actually, I burned Reborn, so we've gotten Reborn, but we had to settle for Launcher. It's our other Reborn monster uh, card, and then we don't want to get like something like Mirage because our hand might get like we might draw a monster the turn we add Mirage back. So never really want to Launcher for a monster um, unless you know you can Levier it back because they can also make their own Levier and take your monster, uh, which is not what you want to do. Uh, so we drew Avenger, and then <laughs> I was getting beat up here. They drew uh, Grandmaster. So had they happened to attack with Elder first, I would have lost, I believe. Yeah, it would have been exactly 4,000. Is it worth taking that risk? Um, I don't know. I mean, Elder is pretty small, so I guess he just doesn't know. Obviously, it's not a Necromancer set. Um, so it's like, what else can it be? If it's not Necromancer, maybe he just wasn't sure about Avengers. Yeah, he attacked with Grandmaster as if it was Necromancer, but I would just obviously just summon it, so... Anyways, I love this turn. So now I can add the Launcher, and I drew Mirage, so again, really good top decks in this deck. So now we can go Mirage, get Archfiend Necromancer, we have Archfiend Avenger Engrave as well. To get another Necromancer. And then we launch her. We did launch her, add, or Archfiend add Necromancer, and then ditch Necromancer to get Archfiend Necro. And we got a Barrier. Now I was having to think a way like to clear this Roach, because Roach is pretty annoying in this scenario just because I can't make a Synchro. I was like, well, I want to get my Archfiend's engraved for these Necromancers, but I also want to clear the Roach. So the best way to clear the roach was make my own roach, 1900 beater, just to crash into his roach. So that was kind of, a, that was the one time I think I made roach in this tournament. I just did that to crash. Okay, so now I'm free to make synchros. Uh, we did both necromancers get Avenger Archfiend, and then he's just kind of gonna get cooked from there because he's top decking into nothing, probably. And imagine six hands is not a very good top deck top decking deck so he draws kind of busted in this game it's united it says it's um, kind of able to pop off he drew the warning which is pretty good uh, I decided just to set everything my hand's not very good it's Avenger, Necromancer, Necromancer and yeah so he's just like getting all these guys out here and for some reason like this all randomly gain attack like Kageki goes up to 1700, Kizan gains 300, so it goes up to 21 as well. 
So you go swing uh, with Zanji. I think it would pop anyways. Um, you get 17 in, 21 in, 21 in. I think it's another 21 in because it's asceticism. He copies, oh, you get 17. So this guy's base 17, but then he gets 500 for no reason. It's like, oh my god. So I just got like brutally OTK there. Um, so my starting hand is Tour Guide, Tour Guide, one for one, Mirage, the Launcher, Neck, or Mirror Force. So this is kind of like something I didn't really like about Tour Guide. Um, like in the past, it's just like, you know, are we gonna night grapher? They get you to whatever you need. Tour guide. If you don't really open archine or have a way to send archine, you know, tour guide doesn't get you archine, which archine is kind of like what lets you play. Uh, so it's not really too great, but we decided to just make Leviathan here just because it's good, it's big, um, and you know it's has the same stats as Sheehan, so you can't really go for that. Uh, so he gets United again, and he MSTs my Mirror Force that he just drew. And he drew Warning again off the... Now, yeah, so I think I was probably kind of screwed here if he just... I don't know, I thought it, was, it would be more punishing if he... What was it? Yeah, so like Mega Leviathan actually was pretty good just because it was like so big. I think uh, Shien can crash and then he gets pop like keys on if you wanted to. I was like, I was kind of like happy he made Trish in a weird way because like I was like, oh okay. As long as he doesn't banish uh, something too crazy in my hand, I forget what he banishes. Mirage, okay. I can live with that. He sets warning. I draw Song Judgment. Uh, again, I don't have Archine, so I forget what I do here. He just warning, so I'm like, okay. I just said everything. Uh, I must have drawn like Armageddon Knight. To get, oh yeah, I drew Armageddon Knight. <laughs> so yeah, another good top deck in this scenario. And he has like this negate uh, counter trap set too. So now I'm going to, going to be able to do some damage here. Uh, so we send Archine, get the Archine going. Uh, we unfortunately our Necromancer did get banished by the Trishula, so we don't have that. So we had to get a little creative. Um, so we search Avenger, and we one for one our Avenger way get Mirage. So Having the second Mirage actually came up in this scenario. So we crashed our Armageddon Knight here. I think I did that so I can make the Hunter Eyes Dragon with the Archfiend. And uh... Yeah. Because... Maybe this is where I got mix mixed up with the Sticky Insurgents. Because Hunter Eyes requires a Fiend non-tuner, whereas Surgeons doesn't require a Fiend non-tuner, it just requires a Fiend tuner. So maybe that's where I got messed up earlier on. Again, I, I don't really play Tengu format all too often. Um, but yeah, it's a little rusty there, I guess. So I crashed the Armageddon Knight to make Avenger level 4, and then I can take these two into the Hunter Eyes and then Mirage effect. Yeah, because I did that because I still don't have uh, access to the uh, Necromancer. Actually, I think I, this is a misplay. I don't. I shouldn't have really made Hunterize Dragon because Hunterize isn't good if I'm not gonna have Necromancer. Because it's like, oh well. Now, it's like I'm just gonna make a level five and then I can make a level five again. Or so yeah, I definitely didn't. As this play started happening, I didn't really like it. So maybe I should have just like, I should have just crashed with Archfiend into Trishula, take a little less damage. And then I can just make like a, a Scrap Dragon or, I don't have like, Tom extra deck there, but 
I could have made... I mean, Doom Dragon but it wouldn't be bad either because then I could just pop this Trishula. Anyways, I did Huntrise, copy the Mirage. Then we get Avenger Archfiend. We get Double Break so we can pop some things. He summons the keys on. And I decided to pop keys on. Uh, what did I pop keys on again? I don't really recall why I popped keys on, but. Anyways, he's chaining his statusism here. Keys on's gonna go, and then I can break the Trishula. He's gonna Magatama, and then I get Solemn Judge on the Magatama. Uh, I drew his Street Patrol, and we're just kind of. Oh, this guy, Surgeons, this is where Surgeons was nice, because Rose Storm was talking about playing two Cataster over Surgeons and Cataster, where Cataster can come up twice sometimes, but. That's where Surgeons was really nice because it was able to, it's kind of like a mini BLS where it can swing twice, so we swung over that for 400 and then we get in for 3,000 and then 16 and 22 and that's just like a enough for game. So yeah. Yeah, it wasn't really a fan of that Hundrize play there. It should have been like another level 8. Did I, yeah, I used Launcher, okay. But yeah, that was like a interesting match. That was definitely like the scariest one. That's because six hands can kind of get the jump on you really quick. Like I just got OTK'd uh, really quickly, game two. So yep. So that was so I finished three one in Swiss and small tournament. So uh, we're on to top four. It was just a top four cut, and I'm playing against Gravekeepers. So when you think of Gravekeepers versus Infernity, you're like, well. Infernity's probably screwed because of Necker Valley. So I'm going first. I got Inferno, Warning, Call of Haunted, Break, Cold Sark, Archfiend. Again, they don't really have. Um, I don't think they play Heavy Storm. So I don't really have to worry about that. Oh. Oh, yeah, I kept the Gold Sark just so I can fool this shit. Maybe yeah, I should have played the Gold Sark. I don't really recall what I was thinking here. Oh. Okay, so I just shotgun the Inferno. That's what I was going for. Okay, so I was shotgun Inferno just to make break live. So I can pop a Necromancer or a Necro Valley if I need to. Cause you can you can uh, pop the Necro Valley on the activation with Inferno Break. If you didn't know that. So yeah, they go their hand is Stele or whatever. Uh Dust Shoot. It's kind of funny how dead their stuff is. Like, that's a, they got Mirror Force, Dark Hole, Roll Tributes, Spy, and so yeah. Normally, this hand's probably pretty nuts against like agents or something like that. Well, I mean, they don't have Necro Valley, but you know, you'll be pretty happy to see Roll Tribute and Dust Shoot most likely. But going second, um, they don't really get to see what I have set, and it's, their cards are just kind of dead. Well, that kind of worked out for me. Then we go uh, Reborn for Archfiend here. Get the Launcher. Didn't want to get any, like, a Mirage or anything just because um, that can, uh, I could draw another monster and it'll just be dead. But I also just want to call Hans to avoid something like a Solemn Warning, which they don't have. Uh, we drew a Book of Moon. We go Launcher here for Archfiend. Avenger, and then we didn't go for a level 8 because it's now like a whole lot of profit to go for a level 8. Um, and we want to get this Necromancer effect to search for it. Get another search for Archfiend. So we get a Necromancer. We, yeah, we haven't even normal summon yet, so. And then we can go for another level 8. Make Stardust Dragon. Uh, Stardust Dragon is kind of nuts against this deck. Uh, so we go Surgeons here, and yeah, they have Mirror Force, so <laughs> it's kind of like dodge that. They get Recruiter, and we just, so Surgeons can just kind of run over both things, so that's pretty nice. Uh, so they drew the Ascendant, and they're going to get the Commandment guy. 
Now I go uh, break here. I'm, I'm pretty sure they probably have a Staley set because you know they got five. They got a bunch of grave keepers in grave. So, but you know, like what else are you going for any break if you know you can't do it in the first place? So I just decided to make them waste a the resource. You know, burn another Necro Valley. So they get Necro Valley again. They set Spy. So it's at 25 now. Uh, we drew Inferno. So yeah, we couldn't really do a whole lot there. Oh yeah, so I have some warning set, so I was kind of wanting them to flip the Spy. Well, I guess uh, I could have swung into it anyways, but I didn't want to swing in with Stardust. So yeah, it was it, it would have been a wash anyways. Uh, so they flip Spy. I saw him warning it. It's actually not even confirmed if it's going to be Spy either. So maybe yeah, I should have swung, but... Actually, yeah, they added Spy off the uh, Staley, I think. So yeah, it actually, I actually know it's Spy. So they flip Spy. I saw him warning it just to... So I can like just get through his monsters. It's you know 2,500 defense, so it's really big. Uh, they go... Comment on here. I... Um, so he... He runs over, I get Avenger, so Avenger is level 3 now, so actually I can make a level 8 play, which is pretty spicy. I drew MST, which was pretty nice to clear the Necker Valley. And once you clear Necker Valley, it's just that kind of just crumbles. And uh, we're able to make a level 8 play here, so we're able to get access to those Necromancers. Again, I had 2 engraved, so I can expand to 1, summon Archfiend. Archfiend can get Mirage. And I can just kind of just freely do this because I have Stardust. I don't think he really has anything to stop Stardust. So... Yeah. We, uh... Mirage get the... Necromancer Avenger. And then we can just copy... We can go Hunter Eyes, copy the Mirage, get a Trap. And... Guess I wanted to see what happens first with this, uh, these swings. We just make, I actually should have made a Doom Dragon here, or just kept those guys on the field the way they were. It's kind of, this should have been a Fernie break, or yeah, this was like a small mistake. So it should have probably been Doom Dragon. I think Doom Dragon can pop uh, set monsters, I believe. I don't remember. But Scrap Dragon's good here. Two, just because I can get rid of this Call of Haunted, and I can get rid of Inferno and Chain Inferno if I want to. So I have a lot of things I can pop with Scrap Dragon. But I think he's pretty much dead. So yeah, he had nothing really going on. Uh, so game two, he opens Compulse, Duality, MST, Descendant, Book, and Valley. Whereas I open Armageddon, MST, Necro Tour Guide Reborn. Got Bottom's Trap Hole. I don't know. I feel like I'd rather just get the warning, but I guess he values, you know, banishing the Archfiend. So he dumped Archfiend. That's because there's not a whole lot going on. Might be a little risky setting this MST. That's in case they happen to have their own MST that they can blind, but. Uh, they set the Compose and Bottomless. So you go swing. I just deprison. You know, this I side in the deprison and against this deck. And he had to. I don't know if I would have done this, but he. Wow, he, he could have. Mm, I don't know. I feel like it might have been better to just book a moon and descend it, but. He decided. Wow, you're not setting MST either? Okay. I don't know, I feel like you have to set MST, but maybe he's just really scared of the, uh... Yeah, MST would have been pretty nice here, probably. <laughs> but maybe he's just scared of the potential of Heavy Storm, but, like, I don't know, if you're playing like deck like this, I don't think you can be just, like, playing scared of Heavy Storm. Like, playing a deck like Gravekeepers, you just kind of have to, like, slam your stuff. Because then you're just going to be losing, because you're not setting MST. 
not that MST in this particular scenario what really mattered. Um, but yeah. I actually kind of want to stop and look at this play here. So what did I do? Uh, can't really rewind. It would be cool if there was a rewind feature. I was just kind of going through it. Anyways, I did a one for one play to get double Necromancer, and then I, well, actually, the tour guy brought back, brought out a Necromancer, and I think I one for one another Necromancer away to get Mirage, then Mirage got Archie Necro. Get this swap in here. Uh, so, yeah, I did the Meister to detach Archie. Let's get off the field. And then I know he has bottomless set, so I was doing like all these weird plays to play around his bottomless because I can obviously make Levier play. So he kind of just has to sit there with the awkward bottomless, so warning definitely would have been better in this scenario. And I just made Leviathan just to clear the thing. Because, like, you know, those, those cards weren't really doing much uh, sitting there. I was able to get the, the poke in, though. Did I not attack with a tour guy? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah, that's something I missed. Anyways, uh, he has Necro Valley. Well, he MST the barrier, and then he did Necro Valley Descendant with Solemn Judgment, so kind of stuck here a little bit. Then Meister's still pretty big, he's able to crack over the Descendant. Draws Warlords. I draw Raiko. So Raiko is pretty cool. Just like a good catch all here of anything. Uh, so we go flip Raiko, pop the Necro Valley, which is pretty good. And then I set this. I guess when. I don't know. When I set this, because he knows this is like a set Necromancer, I think. Because uh, he, yeah, he booked a Moon Knight. He flips Warlords uh, when I have Raiko and Zen Meister. I guess I should have Zen Meister. I didn't think of this, but you can Zen Meister set Raiko, which is pretty cool interaction. That's something that Gravekeeper used to set their spies if they get too many monsters on the field. That's kind of a cool swarming technique for the that deck, but here, because Zen Meister booked the Raiko, kind of forgot about that. So he has Warlords. I have Break, so... I think that's kind of the way for... Actually, I could book my uh, own Zen Meister. I don't think that was got something I thought of. Yeah, that was dumb. Why? Okay, so I should have just done that. I could have just booked Zen Meister. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Zen Meister. I think that would have been just... We have Solemn too. But then I would have flip. The woman flip necromancer get arching arching get another necromancer obviously I don't have anything else I don't know definitely would have been better off with the uh, fiends rather than machines anyways uh, they kind of scoop because they're just like low on life points and they don't really have anything so yeah that's something I should have done there just set that and then I can flip Necromancer and do whatever I want. I also have Reborn, so like, yeah, I just have like a lot of things going on. And again, I have some nice top decks. I didn't even use Launcher yet, so. Interesting games, interesting games. Actually, we could have uh, done like the, we wouldn't, we wouldn't been able to make Hundred because of, again, Warlords, but. Anyways, uh, so that was top four games, so that went pretty well. And we're on to the finals. Uh, this is Cassis, uh Chaos against uh, Duck Tracy. Duck Tracy plays uh, Edison format also. So, yeah, I believe so anyways. Um, but yep. Yeah, so I'm a little familiar with them. And they have a, a pretty nice opening hand here. It appears. So, obviously they probably know I'm playing Infernity. Uh, they pod duality for Max C, so now they're they have a couple chaos monsters, but no darks. 
So they set Wing Blast for the Cassis, and they got Reborn, Maxi, and some Chaos guys. I have I have a pretty monster heavy hand, but like it can kind of go off next turn. So probably go summon Gruffer here. Yeah, actually, I think I might summon Tour Guide here just to try to bait the Maxi. Yeah, so we we uh we do that play here. But maybe it is something better to to summon the Gruffer. We summon Gruffer, did Street Patrol, and then Tour Guy. We can summon Tour Guy next turn. Uh, yeah, I think that's something that maybe we should have done. So luckily, Cast it only pops face up card. So there's a so he Wings Blast. Uh, or what I had to find out here in a second. So they draw Kashano. Not a good draw. We, yeah, so we Necromancer, and we Inferno ditch the Gruffer and Archfiend. So this way I can just go Necromancer, they chain Maxi, and then they only draw one card, so it's like a one for one. So we get Archfiend here, and then we can get like a Barrier. Uh, we're pretty good, because we have Call of Haunted here, and again, if they run over my monsters, we just get Avenger. So we just run over the Kashano here. They draw a Torgai, which is a pretty nice draw. And I just let this fly. Uh, ideally, they should have just ran over Necromancer. Yeah, I'm not, not really sure. Yeah, that was definitely just not right. I think they were trying to like avoid the barrier thing, but they should have uh, they should have detached and then like summon Chaos Sorcerer because then Chaos Sorcerer Leviathan can run over Avenger and Archfiend and then Chaos Sorcerer can banish the Necromancer. Uh, actually no, it wouldn't be able to run over, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of strange. I guess they were kind of like stuck either way. I don't think they could have gone. Actually, they could have just reborn the Archfiend. Yeah, that's something they go for. Uh, anyways, they... Yeah, so maybe that's what they should have done. Like, Leviathan, Chaos Horser. I guess they just for I think they actually just forgot about the Avenger effect. Uh, they were not considering that. Because then the Chaos Horser could just banish the Necromancer. But what they should have done is Leviathan, Chaos Sorcerer, uh, run over Avenger and Archfiend, and then like Reborn, Ice Beat Monster Reborn on the Archfiend. I think that's what they should have done. Anyways, that's not what happened. Um, so Avenger is level 4 now because he ran over Archfiend, so that's actually really good. Uh, we have Launcher because we just got off Call of Haunted with Archfiend. We did this to avoid like a Valor or Maxi play any more than Han because Valor only works on the opponent's main phase one, so kind of nice there. Draw Call of Haunted, so we have a lot of reborn cards here. Uh, we made Doom Dragon just to keep this barrier alive, but we also want to get the Archfiend Grave, and then yeah, we're just going to be able to go crazy here. Get Mirage, we haven't normal summoned yet. Make a Hunter Eyes, Archfiend, Avenger. And the reason I didn't get Necromancer here is because we got Street Patrol engraved, so we can just summon Archfiend, make Trishula, and it's just gonna be a lights out. I think that was the first time I summoned Trishula. I could have summoned it another time, but that was the first time I summoned it, so that was this game. Their opening hand is Solemn Judgment, Spy, Vanity Sphine, Casteth, Sangan, Reborn. So not a bad hand by any means. Um, and then we got Avenger, Archfiend, Archfiend, MST, Reborn, Dark Hole. So we have a lot of good spell cards. So we just MST his set. Again, this deck doesn't really have like a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, I just MST'd the set just so I don't have to worry about like a Wing Blast. 
So just uh, avoid that. And then I wasn't really expecting Vandy's Fiend. I haven't seen any Ducks Tracy's uh, gains, but we have we have Dark Hole here. And I didn't really burn Dark Hole here yet because I don't have a special summon play. Like I just drew Gold Sark. I had to kind of get. Uh, I need to get uh, Avenger in the grave for just another monster in the grave. So we kind of just take it slow here. We Gold Sark the launcher because we already have Reborn. That's kind of like the next best thing. Again, we don't really want to Gold Sark any monsters just so we don't brick ourselves. <laughs> and then they summon another Vanity's Fee. I'm like, oh my god, this Dark Hole is going to go crazy. So yeah, sure, I'll take 24. Go for it. I don't know if... And we draw Allure. So we go Allure Darkness. That actually worked out pretty well. Just to get this Archie out of the hand. Not that it was necessary, but I would have had to like normal summon this Archie. And we drew Barrier Call the Haunted, so that was pretty nice. Archie got out of the hand. We Dark Hole, we go Reborn. Archie, they had no hand traps, so... It's kind of able to go crazy here. And then we have Hundred Eyes here to copy. Then we get Barrier. Now Hundred Eyes is actually really good against these kind of decks, is because it's so big. Like the only thing that matches it is PLS. So three thousand monsters in this format are kind of hard to deal with. Even against something like Agents, because Hype Hype Man is like twenty seven hundred. Uh, a lot of the synchros are twenty eight hundred. So. Um, so yeah, we're sitting pretty, pretty nice here. We have two barriers. We have Call of Haunted, so like, no way they can just run. They can't run over Archfiend, Avenger, and through Call of Haunted. There's, there's no way. So these barriers are staying live. We go tour guide. Um, I tour guide just so he can't get a light monster in the grave. Uh, for like any chaos effects. So I decided to do that rather than having to worry about any chaos monsters. We actually had nothing. So um. And the only playable card after that is Monster Reborn. And yeah, we're just able to continue going off next turn. So, yep, that's how I won this tournament. Um, it was a little dragged out. <laughs> uh, me explaining the replays, I guess. Uh, but I try to do my, my best. Explain everything. Uh, if you have any questions down below, just let me know about what I did. Or let me have me explain. Uh, you can just timestamp something and call it out and see like if I was going too fast just uh, ask a question there but yeah this deck is actually pretty good this is playing through the hand traps like maxis and stuff like that because you kind of set up a board of like Archie Necromancer and just simply doing that searching a trap your opponent has to play through the trap they have to play through the Archie Necro and then like they have to deal with the follow up so it, it kind of reminds me of like wind ups in a little bit uh, this is how I like to play Inferni like throughout most of the formats that it's been out. You're just able, it has a really good grind game, and it kind of reminds me of windups in that sense, where it's like you just kind of like your opponent can have like Maxi and stuff. It's like okay, I got Magician Rat or whatever and I, and Rabbit, and just able to like use all their effects and like if you don't like kill me next turn, I'm just gonna be able to do it all again. And so it's like it kind of becomes overwhelming uh, for the opponent. So they need like multiple waves of disruption or just like open nuts. So yeah, this deck's really fun. Um, had a good time playing it again. Had a couple misplays here and there. I think like two that I wasn't too happy about. Um, but yeah, overall it was a fun tournament. Again, small tournament. I didn't play against agents or Tengu plants, so I guess you can ding me on that, but like People consider this cast of chaos deck as like one of the top decks. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty decent. I don't know if it's like top, top tier, but it's uh, pretty good. Uh, Six Sam's I think is slept on. That deck is actually pretty scary. Obviously, it's not as good into like the plants or uh, chaos decks because like you're not playing too many spells and traps in those decks, but. If you combine like something like Shein with Vanity's Emptiness, then it becomes a big problem. Um, trying to think, 
Uh, play against Macro with. It seemed like that was going to go my way anyways, but he DC'd, but you would think that would be a bad matchup. You would think Gravekeepers would be a bad matchup. I was able to deal with that pretty well. So this deck does look really good at grinding and just like overwhelming the opponent. But I'll just leave it at that. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe. And again, if you have any questions, just comment down below. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later.